This program contains material of a disturbing nature. Viewer discretion is advised. She continues taking the medication, but the next morning, she wakes to a nasty surprise. When I woke up, my eye felt more swollen. I went and looked at it in the mirror, and my lid was drooping down my face. Being a freshman at college, that's one of the things you're worried about is how you look. I was beginning to get a little upset and worried. I wore sunglasses and my ball cap so people couldn't see it. I was at work, got a phone call, and it was Melanie. Her eye was getting worse. I told her we should get a second opinion. My mom just reassured me. It was very comforting to know that she's willing to be there for me and let me know that everything's going to be all right. A few days later, Rhonda and Melanie meet ophthalmologist Dr. John Sutphin. When I first met Melanie, her eye was very red. She was very light sensitive and seemed to be in pain. When I looked at the microscope, I could tell instantly what the problem was. Melanie had a parasite. Melanie had acanthamoeba keratitis. I had never heard of it before, ever. Acanthamoeba keratitis is caused by a parasite called acanthamoeba. Inside Melanie's eye, the acanthamoeba parasites are feeding off the naturally occurring bacteria that live just above the lens of her eye. But when their food source runs out, the parasites eat the cells of the eyeball itself, leading to Melanie's eye pain, light sensitivity, and difficulty seeing. My first thought was it couldn't be happening to Melanie. Of all people, it couldn't be happening to her. I was grossed out, but I had no comprehension of how serious this was going to get. What makes the acanthamoeba parasite so dangerous is their ability to burrow deep into the tissue of the eyeball. Once there, they can be very hard to remove or even treat, which allows the parasites to feed on the host's cells unchecked. And Dr. Sutphin has more bad news. I told Melanie she will have to use drops very similar to pool cleaner used in commercial pools. These drops will be very painful and will be given every hour around the clock for four days in a row. I asked her if she just wanted to come home for us to be there with her to do this. And she said no, she wanted to stay at school. But I don't think I realized what I was taking on. Back at her dorm, Melanie begins the treatment. When I put the eye drops in, the pain it caused was just intense burning. It was a mental battle, knowing that the top of the next hour, you were going to have to do it again. And having to set my alarm clock and get up all hours of the night. Just a continuous cycle of pain. Melanie completes the four-day regimen, but it's not enough. The whole colored part of my eye was turning white. It made me look possessed. And I was starting to lose my eyesight. The parasite was completely taking over. Despite completing a treatment of powerful antiparasitic eye drops, Melanie has been unable to rid herself of the infection. At that point, there's a real risk that the amoeba will lead to blindness or even the loss of the eye. At that moment, my whole world stopped. How was I going to be able to finish school? What was I going to do with my career? It's like all of her hopes and dreams and wishes for her life were all going in the gutter. I cried. Um, Mom and I both cried. 
we we didn't know what to say to each other and how to handle it. So we just, we cried it out to deal with it and just said we'd take the next steps that we had to in order to get through this. To save her eye, she needed a corneal transplant. But there are potential complications. He said that my body might not accept this foreign tissue. And even if everything is successful with the surgery, the infection may persist or come back. Either outcome could leave Melanie permanently blind in her right eye. I was shocked. Rhonda accompanies Melanie for the corneal transplant. I was afraid for her, but I didn't want her in any more pain. I would have traded places with her in a minute, in a heartbeat. Doctors wheel Melanie into the OR. The surgeons complete the transplant and take Melanie to the recovery room. The following day, the doctors return. They sat me down and slowly unwrapped my bandage over my right eye. I was afraid I was still wasn't going to be able to see. All I could think was, Please, God, make this have worked. And then they took my eye patch off. Dr. Sutphin put up the big letter A, and I was able to see it with my right eye and say it was a big letter A. I was ecstatic that this is it. It's over. I am finally able to see again. We were all happy, smiling. And I thought to myself, God does answer prayers. Acanth amoeba are single-celled organisms that exist across the world. They live in all kinds of freshwater sources, including city water systems in the US. The most common way that people contract an acanth amoeba infection is through dirty contact lenses. And that's because contact lenses can cause small abrasions on the surface of the eye through which the parasites can enter the host's body. Melanie believes she contracted the infection just as she was starting college. I was up one night studying late in my dorm room, and I ended up falling asleep in my contacts. It was just hard to believe that a one-celled organism could ruin somebody's life. <laughs> 